Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Omicron, Omicron, Omicron. We're hearing this term absolutely everywhere right now. It sounds like a transformer actually, but it is sadly the new variant of the virus that causes COVID-19, contains a large number of mutations. And I wanted to focus on what we know so far and questions we should be asking regarding this particular new variant. News broke last week, surprise, surprise, the media was using words like terrifying and horrific, and even stock markets across the world sunk on this news. So it did really spiral out of all control with regards to how worried people are with this new variant. Interestingly, the news broke a couple of days after I made a video about how well Africa had done as a continent according to reports with regards to COVID-19. But I did say in the video that South Africa was the worst affected country with COVID-19. So it remains to be seen what happens with the rest of Africa over the upcoming weeks. So let's focus on areas of concern, issues and questions we should be asking with this new Omicron variant. Number one, viruses mutate. I repeat, viruses mutate. Now this particular variant of COVID-19, the Omicron variant, has 30 or more mutations, so a large number of mutations. It remains to be seen what effect this has on the disease process. Why do viruses mutate? Well, we know they replicate extremely fast at an unbelievable level in any host. So without getting into the basic fundamentals of evolutionary biology and Charles Darwin and his great discoveries in the 19th century, I'll let you read all about Charles Darwin. And surprise, surprise, of course, Charles Darwin completely attacked by many facets of society when he first came out with his theories. But essentially, a process that takes thousands or even millions of years in other the animal species with regards to new mutations forming and eventually forming new species happens extremely fast in viruses. So if we take another endemic virus like the flu, every year we get a new variant that sweeps the globe and we have to keep expecting these stories. They should not come as a surprise. Number two, over the last few days we have been hearing stories that the Omicron variant has popped up all over the place in Europe, in Asia, in North America, and this tells us one important reality of the situation we're dealing with. By the time you discover a new variant, it is highly likely that it has spread far and wide by that time. And I even have a theory going back to the beginning of COVID-19 that from December 2019 to March of 2020, the original variant of COVID-19 was spreading like absolute wildfire across many Western cities. We simply didn't know it at the time. In many ways, we are always going to be chasing our tail. We discover a new variant and it has already spread to far away places by the time that discovery is made. Number three, will this new variant evade immunity from both vaccines and natural immunity? That is a huge question. Now this data will take weeks to come in. From South Africa so far, I read a report in nature.com that there had been reports of some breakthrough cases in both previously infected people and vaccinated people, but these were quote unquote anecdotal reports. When we hear that term anecdotal report in medicine and science, our guard goes up. What that means is we need more data. We know absolutely nothing about these people. Were they immunocompromised? Were they very elderly? Were there other factors involved? We need all of this information. Number four, the effect on these countries of discovering this new variant in Southern Africa. Already in the last few days, several leaders in these countries have criticized the widespread panic around the world. And think about what sort of message it sends to other countries. Your scientists work hard, you discover a new variant, and the rest of the world effectively blockades you. That is not really going to encourage other countries, is it, to announce new variants when they discover them. Lots of these leaders in Southern African countries have already expressed because so many nations, including the UK, USA, have imposed travel restrictions. They have banned travel from these countries. They have voiced concerns about terrible economic consequences. Now, South Africa might be a slightly wealthier country, but many of these other nations that have travel bans now, including Lesotho, Botswana, are some of the poorest countries in the world. Many people in these countries have to leave their countries, work overseas to send money 
back to their countries and now they are effectively banned from traveling and going to other countries. So we better be damn sure as the international community that when we impose these restrictions on these countries that we are doing the right thing here, especially if the virus has already spread far and wide. Number five, the biggest question of all, how bad is infection with this new variant? Rather than hearing it from me, I want to hear it essentially from the horse's mouth, as it were. Here's what one of the South African doctors that first discovered the new variant said on the BBC a few days ago. And, and remember, I'm at the epicenter. Uh, uh, that's where I'm practicing. It's extremely mild. For us, that's mild cases. Um, we haven't admitted anyone. I spoke to other colleagues of mine. The same picture. So do you think that we, uh, in, you know, in Britain, in the United States, in Israel, in Europe, do you think we're all panicking unnecessarily? I think you already have it there in your country. You're not even knowing it. And uh, I would say, yes, at this stage, I would say definitely. Two weeks from now on, maybe we will say something different. So did you hear that then? Extremely mild symptoms with no hospital admissions. Let's hope things stay that way. And I want to finish up by coming back to our collective response all across the world to this story. We have seen over the last week fear, anxiety, stress and panic soar to unbelievable levels. And this is obviously a repetitive pattern. Those of you who follow my videos know that I am a huge proponent of stoicism. And the problem with modern day culture, especially in Western countries, is that we are the complete opposite of a stoic society. We are anti-stoicism in many ways. Fueled by the 24-7 news cycle and social media, everything nowadays is about instantaneous emotional reactivity and instantaneous responses ill thought out to any problem that we face. And this culture is actually encouraged. We don't encourage people enough to take a step back and be more calm. We actually encourage people to be more and more reactive. So it is a vicious circle that we're in. And the problem is not just at a societal level where this is an impediment to solving big problems, but even at an individual level, I would say that being an emotionally reactive person and having your buttons pressed so easily is a massive barrier to health, wellness, and also happiness. But overall, emotional reactivity is the enemy of the progress of mankind. We have to find a way to step back from the abyss. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest teachers of Stoicism, the great Roman emperor, I encourage you all to read about him, would be absolutely horrified if he saw modern day culture. He would be turning in his grave. So I do hope we can find a way to reverse this trend in society and approach big problems, not just with COVID-19, but everything through the lens of being more calm, rational, logical, and really thinking everything through that we are doing. So will this new Omicron variant end up being the worst thing ever? Will it be horrific as some news media outlets are reporting? Is this a huge overreaction or will it be something in between? Time will tell over the upcoming weeks, but we must stay calm and let facts and rational thinking rule us and not fear and unrestrained emotions. Thanks everyone for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, Medstoic Lifestyle Medicine. Follow me as well on locals.com. It is an uncensored platform. Link is down below. We'll speak again very soon.